Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kemsek here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. In this video, we're going to go over um, introduction to XDR. What is XDR? And I'm actually going to show you an example of XDR because I use Microsoft Defender for work. Obviously, if you need to make sure you know what to do, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. So today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of having an XDR solution, understanding what is XDR, understanding why we use XDR, and also understanding... Um, what can you do with XDR? Certain things you can do. I want to go over certain cool things that you could do with XDR. And, and today I also want to share my screen, hopefully give you some wisdom and some knowledge by the end of this video. And as a security analyst, you're like, oh, wow, I didn't know you could do that. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is so true, Kevin. So let me share my screen and go over some cool stuff. All right. So today's video is about Microsoft Defender XDR. And you're probably like XDR, XDR, this, XDR, that. What is XDR, right? So here are some examples of XDR. So you have Trend Micro, you also have Palo Alto, you have Sentinel One, you have Cisco XDR, you have Cynet 360. There are like so many examples out there of you know of XDR, and you're probably like, what the heck is that XDR? So XDR is Extended Detection and Response, cybersecurity platforms that unify security tools and data to help organizations respond to cyber attacks. XDR uses AI and automation to collect, analyze, and correlate data from multiple sources, including endpoints, uh, networks, cloud environments, and more. So you you have your XDRs, and I'll just stop sharing for a second. Um, you have your, you, let me just hide the stream. You you have your XDRs, like, like well, I'm using Defender right now, right? And then your endpoints would be like your computer, your laptop, hardware-related stuff, right? Mobile device, maybe this is part of your mobile device management for Intune, right? So those are your endpoints, and XDR is specifically for Defender. It like checks the checks that computer. That computer has Defender on it, um, or on a Mac or Windows machine. It's gonna give you alerts about it. You're gonna have incident and response alerts. You're gonna get a bunch of alerts about different things. Whether they download a malicious software like malware, maybe they they accidentally run something they weren't supposed to run, or maybe they they ran something that they were supposed to run, and for some weird reason, Defender is, is alerting you about it. So you'll encounter that in your job, if that makes sense, okay? So we'll go back to sharing screen. And here is here is the importance of XDR. Um, obviously, XDR is extension, extension, uh, extension Detective and Response, which I went over already, and here's the importance of it. So detect threats across multiple attack services. XDR can identify threats across a variety of, variety of domains, including endpoints, email, cloud infrastructure, and more. Response to threats more quickly, so it can automate and accelerate detection, and investigation, and response processes. Reduce alert fatigue. XDR can reduce the number of alerts that security analysts needs to ac access. And you probably can't. Let me just make this a little smaller. All right, here we go. Boost cyber. Boost cyber. Boost cyber insurance eligibility. XDR can help reduce security risk and boost cyber insurance eligibility. So. You get all these alerts, right? When you're a security analyst, like how do you respond to it, right? So obviously you want to make sure if the alert is legit or not. So what, what I mean by that, if it's not a false positive, and I'm going to increase the size of this, you can see it. So you may you may encounter false positives when a security system in incorrectly identifies a legitimate activity or file as malicious. So you may have to reach out to the end user to see if the alert was real. And me, what I like to do, I like to add screenshots and documentation on a ticketing system for alerts. Whether it's a dumb alert, like God forbid, an end user logs in, he has a VPN, he runs a VPN. The VPN is putting him, he's in the United States. Now the VPN is taking him to France. You get an alert, an incident response alert saying, this end user just logged in with an, un, with an unusual activity log going into France. Is this a normal or not normal? And then you, you get an alert on Defender saying that you reach out to the end user, the end user is like, hey, Kev, I'm using a VPN. That's normal. So obviously, you know, you should probably mark that down as a false positive. I am I am using VPN and I'm actually using a VPN and that's taking me to France. Or maybe the end user is traveling, right, from the New York to Ireland. And then it, it says, it says uh, incident alert, end user just traveled to Ireland. Is this normal activity? Is this normal for him to log in? And that's probably not normal, right? You'll probably reach out and he'll tell you like, oh, um, yeah, Kev. No, no, no. That, that was me. That was me. I logged in. I logged into. I logged in, and it happened to be in Ireland, right? So you get alerts like that. That's that's normal. That's no, that's really normal. Um, so I said examples of false positives could be VPN, maybe an antivirus software which happens to get flagged for some weird reason as malware. 
emails going back and forth from reg from a regular user. So maybe you have an email from an end user that they have like a strange email address, but they're they're a business partner of your organization. And it just happens to be like a false positive because they have a weird email address that's not recognized by Defender, right? And it just happened to me last week. Someone's running a tool like Mac Cleaner on their machine and they happen to have a Mac machine. And it's like, what is this end user is running Mac Cleaner? It's not normal, it's suspicious behavior. And then please contact that user and you contact them as legit, right? Maybe you have someone that is trying to log into a website and for some reason, Defender is blocking that website. And it's a legitimate website. We don't know, right? And I'll go over that. I'll go over how to block websites in, in the next couple of minutes, all right? So yeah, things like that, if that makes sense. So now that I'm done sharing this, I want to share what we can do in Defender, right? So you go to this one. Here's your Defender login screen. It looks like this. Obviously, it looks different for every XDR tool that I use. It looks a little bit different from each one. They all do their own unique thing, right? So for me, what we care about is incidents. So we go to incidents. I don't have anything right here. But maybe if, if you want to get alerts on incidents, you just go to alert settings on the top right-hand side. And then what we could do is we go to email notifications. And then here, you could create your alerts right here. So I'm not sure why it's giving me that shit. Sometimes, you know, the defender's a little wonky, but here we go. And you go here, and you see my name is there, and you hit edit, and you go to next. Here you can set up, like, send a notification per incident. Uh, what notifications do you want? I want EDR, antivirus, smart screen, defender, XDR, et cetera, et cetera. I wanted uh, I want information. If you want information, though, it's not gonna it's gonna give you just information about it. That's it, right? And if you want to add a service, you can. And then what we could do here, as for testing purposes, you actually could add an email here to see if it actually works. So I added my email there already, and you hit paste, and you do send a test email, and just give that a second. Something we want to try again. This this defenders I guess gets wonky sometimes. And then you review your 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 uh, rules, and then you're all set after that, and you hit submit. So it's already set up for me, so I don't gotta do anything. So I hit cancel, and I should I should get an an alert or not an alert, but an email saying this email was sent by by defender for XDR for defender by XDR for practice purposes, yada 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 yada, right? So just give that a second, but I should get an email because I just sent a test email to see if this is actually legitimately working. All right, um, and then the next thing you want we want to look at is uh, onboarding, right? How do you onboard a device? Because I said you can onboard Mac and Windows, right? And I literally just got an alert just now as I'm talking and speaking to you guys. So look, you get an email like this. So this is Defender XDR. Let me just share that screen because you probably can't see it. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, the entire window. Yeah, so I just got an alert saying, um, yeah, Defender for test, Defender test notification for CapTech IT. You're receiving a notification service because you are part of the email notification recipient. You're receiving an email notification in your environment, the following low, medium, high, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So go back to this one. All right, we're back on this one. I'll close that and kill that. Yeah, so if you want to onboard a device, and if you go to settings, you go to endpoints, um, and if you go to onboarding, you have your devices right here to onboard. So you just do Windows 10, 11, Windows 7, Server 2019, Mac OS X, Linux. And then if you scroll all the way down, you could do group policy. You could do mobile device, mobile device management, Microsoft Intune, VDI onboarding scripts, like a virtual desktop, interface, probably for Citrix most likely. Um, you have your downboard, download onboard package here as well. And then you have your scripts you can run, et cetera, et cetera. Here also there is the option to block websites. So how do you do that? So if you go to your advanced features, and if you scroll down, and if you do web web content filtering, you could turn this on, and then you could save preferences, right? So now I just added this feature to for blocking stuff, right? And then what we could do is we could go to web content filtering, right? We could add a policy in here and then say block policy, block policy for websites, right? And then you hit next. 
And here you select what you want to block. You go block pornography, nudity, gambling, maybe um, download sites, maybe hacking, illegal drug, illegal software, um, games, instant messaging, chat, maybe social networking like LinkedIn, right? Et cetera, et cetera. And you hit next, you hit next, and you hit submit. And then once that's done, now it's going to, now, Defender is going to try to be smart with AI and it's going to try to block certain websites that you're you're trying to go into if your computer has Defender installed on it, right? It gets granular as you go into indicators. So if you really want to block a certain thing, you can if you go in here. So if you go to URLs and domains and if you hit add an item and you put google.com, it's going to ask you for a website, google.com, right? If I could type today. Um, and then you put block, block policy, right? And then if you hit next, you can hit block execution. You could warn, audit, or allow. So you do audit and do next. And it says your security alert. So it'll give you an alert about that. When someone when someone logs in, it'll give you an alert about that person going to Google.com, right? You know, you have an alert. Maybe, maybe, maybe you wanna, maybe it's not Google.com, maybe it's YouTube. Maybe, maybe you have someone that's going into YouTube for some weird reason and you don't want them to be on YouTube. Maybe you, it's facebook.com and you don't want them to go to facebook.com because you know we're we're working right and it where facebook shouldn't even be allowed right so maybe you want to block it or maybe you want to audit it to see if anyone's doing anything weird right and then you you could just you could just put like informational for now and then here you're going to you want to do you want to do you want to collect a collection do you want to know about uh initial access do you want to know about malware you know there's all these things you could put in here suspicious activity right Let's do collection. You can do collection of miter techniques if you want, right? It gets really granular here, like the ACP, SharePoint key logging, right? Maybe, maybe I want to do um maybe I want to do more like uh let's just go into suspicious activity and that's it and hit next. And then this is all the organ this is the whole organization. And it's gonna now it's gonna put expires, never audit, response action, nothing information or give me some information about the suspicious activity and that's it and then i could submit it right so something like that if you want to create something like that you can man you could do more than this that's just an example right so i'll stop sharing for now um so let's just stop sharing and go back to me yep and then that's it and that's it for me for today Hopefully this helps you out. If you're into Defender, um, now you know you can block websites, you can whitelist websites, you can allow certain websites. Um, you could put, you could set up settings for malicious activity. You could set up settings for anyone trying to go into certain categories that are characterized in the section for pornography, et cetera, et cetera, education, gambling, blah, blah, blah. So if you are a security analyst, you know what I'm talking about. You get false positives, you can set up alerts. You have to be SOC 2, type 2 compliant, all this good stuff. Make sure you set all these things up. Make sure you have your incident response set up correctly. Now, sometimes you get false positive. That doesn't make any sense. So make sure you contact your end users if they actually are doing an activity and it's actually normal behavior. We mark that down as legitimate behavior. Anyway, with that being said, hopefully this video helps you out. And I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful Saturday. Take care. Peace. Bye.